Angle grinders are one of the most versatile tools that you can get. You can use them for cutting, grinding or polishing metal. You can also use them on masonry. Machines like this are very, very useful and these are used all over the world in thousands of workshops for cutting metal and materials like that on a daily basis. However, these are also one of the most dangerous machines that you can actually get. If you use an angle grinder or an abrasive wheel at a place of work, you will probably need to go on an abrasive wheels course. That will need renewing every couple of years. This video is going to show you how to use one of these machines safely. And one of the most important things is to keep safe because accidents with these machines can be quite horrific. I have had quite a lot of people over the years calling me a pussy and calling me a lot of nasty names because I do tend to wear all the PPE when I'm using one of these, mainly because I have to wear that PPE when I'm on site. If I don't wear that PPE when I'm on site, I will get kicked off site. It's as simple as that. What I'd like you to do now is go to Google, click on image search at the top, and then type in angle grinder accidents and click on the search button. And I do have to warn you that it is very gory. If at any point you think that this video that I'm making is a bit boring, please just go back to Google and do the image search again and just remind yourself why you have to be very careful when you're using machines like this. Here we have some of the smaller machines. That one is a four and a half inch, which is a very popular size. And that one is actually 230 volts. At the side of that, I've got a cordless one which runs off an 18 volt battery. This is a very useful machine. That one will actually accept a five inch disc. So you do get half an inch extra cutting capacity with the slightly larger grinder. You can also get a smaller grinder, which I believe is four inch, but I do believe that that has a smaller spindle size. All of the machines here going up to nine inch all have the same spindle size. And that is a 22.2 millimeter bore and the actual thread is a M14 thread. After the four and a half inch and five inch, you can get, I believe, a six inch and a seven inch. And then after that, we jump up to the nine inch. So these machines are very handy, but they are also very dangerous. The problem with these machines is the actual speed that they rotate at. These machines can actually rotate at 11,000 RPM. If something happens to the disc on that machine at that speed and the disc bursts or breaks, the shrapnel that flies off there is going to be traveling at between one and 200 miles an hour. So that can make a real mess of you. Normally, the larger the machine, the slower it rotates at. So the smaller ones like that rotate at 11,000 RPM. You then get the nine inch machines, which rotate at about 6,500 RPM. And then you get the larger machines at the back, like this Evolution, that will rotate at 4,500 RPM. When you get to the larger machines like the Evolution at the back there, that is not, strictly speaking, an angle grinder. That is actually a cut-off saw. These are ideal for the larger jobs for cutting steel. And also, if you've got the masonry blade in like that, they are extremely good at cutting concrete and brick, etc. The smaller machines, such as this four and a half inch machine, tend to have a switch which you can switch on and leave switched on. That's so that you can use it comfortably without keeping your finger on the switch. When you get to the larger machines, such as this nine inch one, it is a lot more difficult and these tend to have a dead man's switch on them. If you try pressing this switch, you can't actually press it down by accident. You actually need to pull that part down before you can press in the trigger switch. So that is a safety feature that you often find on the larger machines. And often on larger machines, you cannot actually lock the switch on. You can only do that with the smaller machines. The larger machines like that are absolutely great for cutting large pieces of steel and for cutting accurate angles, etc. They're also very good on masonry. You can see that has been used quite a few times. One thing you need to look out for is an actual buildup of material on the inside of the guard. So you can see that if you were to put a brand new nine inch disc on there, there is very little room around the outside. So any buildup can cause problems. So it's a good idea to keep the guard clean on the inside. Most angle grinders are mains powered and these particular ones are 230 volt. If you're working on site, you'll probably have an 110 volt one. 
You can also get cordless ones like this which are incredibly useful. You can also get air operated angle grinders but they are a lot rarer and tend to be used for specific jobs. For most people they will either use a cordless one like this or a mains powered one like that. I have had a few comments over the years about the guards and some people on YouTube seem to think that you can use the machine without the guard. I have to tell you that removing the guard from a machine like this is a very stupid thing to do. You really need to keep the guard in position and it needs to be adjusted in the correct position for you when you're using it. Some guards are easier to adjust than others. This one is very simple. You can simply do it with one hand by undoing that lever and then just tighten it up wherever you want it. The Metabo one's a little bit different. On that we just need to undo that screw and then we can turn that round to wherever we want it and then tighten the screw back up. But it's absolutely critical that you use the guard. Sometimes people remove the guards because they want to fit a larger disc than is designed on the machine. That is an incredibly stupid thing to do. Take for example that disc which is a 7 inch disc. Obviously it's not designed for this machine. It won't go on there. If you take the guard off there that will actually fit. That causes a massive problem. As I said earlier the larger machines rotate at a slower speed than the smaller machines. So if you put a large disc on a small machine you can overrun it. So this disc for example is to be run at a maximum RPM of 8500 RPM. If you are stupid enough to remove the guard from that and you put that disc on there you're going to overspeed the disc. Not only that, but you are in danger of cutting your wrists as well because there's no guard on it. Discs like this are very fragile and they're actually made by compressing an abrasive. Sometimes they use a resin or sometimes they use another material to hold them together. For cutting metal, most of the discs are aluminium oxide and for cutting stone, most of the discs are silicon carbide. If you over speed a disc by running it at a faster rotation than what it's supposed to, the disc can actually explode. And as I've said earlier, the shrapnel that comes off there is traveling between 1 and 200 miles an hour. So obviously if that hits you, it's going to make a real mess of you. So it's absolutely critical that you keep the guard on the machine at all times. And never try to put a disc on a machine which is not designed for that machine. There are a vast amount of discs and blades available for these machines now, most of which can be used on metal and stone. You can actually get wood cutting discs for grinders, but all the instructions I've ever read for angle grinders have said not to use angle grinders for cutting wood. I think there's an issue with the kickback on the machines, which is why you should never use an angle grinder for cutting wood. However, you can use them for sanding wood, that is a completely different issue. Angle grinders are absolutely superb at sanding and shaping timber. So these are some of the discs available and you will notice that they're all different sizes. So before you use a disc you need to ensure it's the correct one for your machine. Obviously I know that this is a 9 inch one and that is a thin stainless steel cutting disc although you can use these on normal steel. And what happens when you're using that disc is it will actually wear down and eventually it will get down to a size like that. Once it gets down to that size it's actually no longer usable in a 9 inch machine. But that doesn't mean that you should then take it off and use it on a 4.5 inch machine because it will fit. But as mentioned earlier you're going to over speed it. If you do that it can explode. You could end up with bits of abrasive disc stuck all over the place. So once it gets down to an unusable size it's a good idea to smash it and throw it in the bin. Take this disc for example, you can't actually see what it is. It has been well used. You could put that on a four and a half inch grinder. You could probably cut a couple of pieces of metal with it, but it's not worth the risk because you don't know what it is. So if you ever get a disc that's too small for the machine that you're using, simply break it, then nobody else can use it and throw it in the bin. A lot of discs like this should never be got wet. If they get wet it can actually break down the bond which is holding the disc together. So if you do get a disc and it's wet, break it again, chuck it in the bin. It's not worth risking having a serious accident using one of these that has been wet. An important thing that people don't realise is that discs like this actually have an expiry date on them. 
they're actually bonded together that bond can break down over time now I actually bought these two discs specifically for this demonstration and I actually bought these two because they were depressed center as you can see it is depressed in the center there normal cutting discs are flat but you can get special ones like that which are depressed these are useful in some circumstances when I actually bought these I actually looked at the date on them and if you look at the bottom there you can see that it says 2006 that is the expiry date of the disc so that disc is 11 years old there is absolutely no way at all I would ever risk putting that on a machine that's spinning at 11,000 rpm you are absolutely asking for trouble to be fair on the guy that sold these I don't actually think he did this intentionally I do believe that somebody that he employed has unintentionally shipped these to me not knowing about the expiry date so that is one thing you should always check before you go using a disc if it's out of date simply bin it don't risk using it you could have a nasty accident another thing if you drop a disc like that you don't know what damage you've done to it again break it throw it in the bin the last thing you want is somebody putting that on a machine at 11,000 rpm and having a nasty accident basically for working with metal you get two types of discs they're the cutting disc which are thin like so that is a depressed center one I tend to use these which are called slitting discs these are one millimeter thick they often are used on stainless steel etc and they're often stamped with inox which means stainless steel these are very useful but you should only use these for cutting metal you do not want to try grinding with one of these it could fly into pieces the thicker discs like that are actually grinding discs and this one is actually a stone grinding disc for grinding stone you can always tell a grinding disc it is considerably thicker than a cutting disc metal cutting discs and metal grinding discs normally contain aluminium oxide as the abrasive medium and stone discs contain silicon carbide most of these discs can only be used on steel or stainless steel you do have to be very careful what you cut with them you don't want to try cutting aluminium with one of these because they're actually made from aluminium oxide so if you ever do need to cut aluminium you're much better off using a stone cutting disc which is silicon carbide but then you do need to take precautions because the actual dust when you're cutting aluminium can be flammable or even explosive some metals are incredibly dangerous to cut such as magnesium alloys they can be explosive and also if you're cutting copper that can actually be toxic so it's a good idea to only use these on steels and you should really only use them on metals which you know what they are you don't want to be cutting anything if you don't know which type of metal it is you will notice that all of these discs regardless of the size are all 22.2 millimeter bore or 7 eighths of an inch and that is the bit that creates the problems with people trying to use the larger discs on the smaller machines so we've covered the abrasive disc now we're now going to take a look at the diamond discs these are a much better idea these are far safer there's much less chance of you having an accident with the disc disintegrating if you use a disc like this this particular one is a tile cutting disc and that is made by Mark Rist that is a very useful piece of kit another thing with these is they don't tend to get smaller like normal discs do that's an old grinding disc as you can see it's considerably smaller than when it started off you don't actually get that problem with these diamond discs they also give you a very good finish so where possible I would always use a diamond disc that one is specifically designed for cutting masonry but these are absolutely superb if you get the option to use a diamond disc like this you are a lot better off doing that they are far safer an important thing when you're using a disc is to keep it moving you don't want to hold it in one place too long on the material that can actually cause a heat buildup. so as you can see in this example I'm actually moving the angle grinder forwards and backwards to cut my way through this old fork of a forklift truck this is a very tough piece of steel and the angle grinder is cutting it absolutely no problem at all 
there's not much that an angle grinder won't cut through they will cut through virtually anything you can even use them to cut through hardened steel cutting this are used for cutting only grinding discs are used for grinding only a better option for grinding is a flat disc like that these are absolutely fantastic and they do give you a lot less vibration when you're using them than a grinding disc and as you can see the problem with grinding discs is that they actually get smaller in size as you use them whereas the flat disc tends to stay the same size although the abrasive paper it does wear off so they are a much better option and these are a lot easier to use and a lot safer you can actually get some now like that and that one is actually threaded in the center so you don't even need to mess about using the flange nut so all we need to do with this is ensure that the battery is unplugged simply take that spin it onto the spindle and that's it you can then use it once you finish with it press in the spindle lock and simply undo the disc it is absolutely fast as anything to remove one of those discs and put a new one on So you can cut metal with a grinder, you can grind metal with a grinder and you can also polish metal with a grinder. These are polishing discs. You can get different grades of these and what you tend to do is use the more abrasive one first and then keep going down until you get the less abrasive one for the final polish and then you can actually use metal polish. These will give you an absolutely fantastic finish. This disc is a paint removal disc. These can be used on wood or metal. I've only actually used these on metal so far, but they do give you an absolutely fantastic finish and remove the paint, no problem at all. It is important that you store your discs correctly. You don't want to leave them laid down like that because anybody can damage them. I do tend to hang them up on the inside of a cupboard where they're safe and where they're not going to get damaged. You can also get sanding discs like that. To use them, you need a backing pad. So that goes on first and then the abrasive. And then you do need a special kind of nut like that, a special flat flange nut. That then goes in there. You tighten that up on the spindle you can then use that for sanding. These are very good on wood and you can actually shape the wood quite well using a disc like that. There are quite a lot of different grades of abrasive available. There's very coarse ones leading up to very fine ones like that. You can also get wire brushes that fit on grinders, but unfortunately they're not very nice to use and they do tend to throw steel bristles all over the place. So if you can do, I really would avoid using them. They do tend to stick in your overalls, they can penetrate your skin and they go absolutely everywhere. Before you change the disc on the machine, if it's a battery machine, it's a good idea to remove the battery. That will prevent you from having a nasty accident. If you've got a mains powered machine, you should always switch it off and unplug the grinder before you attempt to change the disc. Most modern grinders come with a spindle lock button which is there on this particular model. If you press that in, it actually locks the spindle on the machine, enabling you to change the disc over. Some of the older machines never actually used to have that, and you did actually need two spanners to be able to change the disc. But most of the new machines these days do have a spindle lock button. So to change the disc, we need to press the spindle lock button in. That will prevent the disc from rotating. We then take the pin wrench, Put that in two of the holes and then undo it in an anti-clockwise direction. Once that's loose, you can spin that off. You can then remove the disc. Fitting a new disc actually confuses some people because they often get confused which way around the flange nut goes. If you look at that, it does have a portion there on that side which is stuck up by a millimetre or two. 
and on that side it is perfectly flush. These are actually made in pairs so that is designed to match up with the rear flange nut on there. If you're fitting a cutting disc it doesn't matter if it's a cutting disc of that thickness or a depressed centre cutting disc it will always go that way around so the flat bit will press down on the disc. The only time you turn that upside down is when you are installing a grinding disc because they are so much thicker. So by putting it on that way around it actually helps to balance the disc. So if we put that on there we'll then take the flange that way around can put that on there and tighten that up. We then need to press in the spindle lock button again and you can actually just tighten that with your fingers with this particular model because that actually has a knurled nut so you can grip that quite easily. If you're ever unsure you can simply press in the spindle lock just nip that up a little bit with the spanner. So if we want to swap that over for another disc we can simply undo that you do need to ensure that when you're fitting a cutting disc that you get it the correct way around. Some discs do have a directional arrow on them so it is critical that you get it in the correct direction if it has an arrow on it. If it doesn't you can put it on anywhere around. We then need to ensure that we get the flange nut the correct way. You don't want to put it on that way around because that will damage the disc. You need to get it where it is completely flat. That needs to be faced down on the disc. Again just press the spin the lock button in and just tighten that up with your fingers and in use that will actually tighten up even more. When you come to undo that you will probably need the pin wrench again. If you're using a machine that somebody else could possibly use it's always a good idea to inspect the flange nut before you install it. What tends to happen is, especially on site, people go to undo that, they can't undo it, they can't find the pin wrench so they take a screwdriver they put it in one of the holes and they smack it with an hammer to release it. And what they tend to do is they then damage the flange nut. So where the holes are you tend to get little bits of metal sticking up and then what happens is somebody comes and turns it over when they're using a different type of disc, tightens that up, that actually bites into the disc, damages it and when it's rotating the disc can burst causing an accident. So you do need to check that the flange nut is in good condition and isn't damaged at all before you use it. You can get some angle grinder flanges now which you don't need a tool to undo such as the Milwaukee Fix Tech. These are a great idea as you don't need to constantly look for the pin wrench. Before you even think about using an angle grinder it's a good idea to put on some PPE. The discs that you use actually have all the information on that you need. That tells you not to use it for grinding says to read the manual, dust mask, earring protection, eye protection, gloves, never use a damaged disc. So the minimum PP that you should be looking at is a pair of safety glasses that meet the required standard, some ear defenders or earplugs, some decent gloves, a dust mask and also a full face visor which is suitable for grinding. When you get all the PPE on you're going to look like this. I know you don't look cool but at least you're going to be safe. You have to be very careful when you're using a grinder on metal because you can easily start a fire. For that reason you should always have at least one working fire extinguisher. In this garage I do actually have three just to be on the safe side. Before you go using a grinder it is a good idea to remove any flammables from the area. If I use the grinder on site we actually have to keep flammables at least 12 meters away from the working area. I also need a hot work permit on site and also a standby man with a fire extinguisher. Normally when you're using a grinding disc the actual disc needs to be on an angle of about between 10 and 30 degrees. One thing you should never do with a disc like that is to try grinding on the edge. They are not designed for that. They are designed to grind on the ender at between 10 and 30 degrees. If you do use a diamond tile cutting blade you can actually cut out some really difficult 
patterns in tiles. In this example I'm actually cutting out a curve in a towel and this is for around a shower tray. So a few things I've made recently with the grinder are the Fox wedges. I actually made these for use on site. These are really useful. You can knock these in between flanges on pipes to spread the pipes apart. So they are very useful and I've also made this 19mm flogging wrench which I made from an old forklift truck fork. Before you start a cut with a grinder you need to ensure that it's going at full speed before you touch the workpiece. And you also need to touch it on there very slowly. What you don't want to do is do a fast sudden drop onto the workpiece because that can actually shatter the disc. So we're going to set the machine going at full speed and then we're going to carefully touch this piece of metal and we'll cut 10 millimeters off the end there. Once you're making the cut you don't want to apply any sideways pressure like that or like that or even try to change direction. If you do that you're going to break the disc. So you will have noticed that I kept the blade moving backwards and forwards to prevent any heat build up and I also ensured that the blade was square on to the cut. You'll also notice that when I set off, I actually set off at the back and followed the cut line forwards. That is a lot easier to see the cut line if you're going in that direction. If you try pulling it back, you can't actually see the cut line because of the guard on the grinder. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I do hope that it hasn't been too boring for you but I did have a lot of stuff to cover in a short period of time. If you've not subscribed already if you could please click on the red subscribe button and then click on the bell icon to receive notifications that would be great.